The defense headquarters has insisted that Boko Haram fighters killed 43 farmers on Saturday in Jerry local government area of Borno State, northeast Nigeria, not 110 as reported by the United Nations. Coordinator Defense Media Operations Major General John Enenche says as of Monday morning, 43 corpses were recovered from the crime scene. Enenche adds that he contacted the field commandants who told him that they counted 43 bodies. The spokesperson, however, says the search for more victims was still on. Clearly, that is coming from the United Nations and not, a, like they say, a source that does not want to be identified. This is a source that identified itself that look over 100, 110 specifically. And I asked them what happened and they now gave me a synopsis, a story of what happened. When the governor was to go, when people they have, you know, uh, uh, recovered the dead. They requested and that the troops must be on ground. Of course, the troops had to move in there. And they assisted in counting and they counted 43. Of course, the people, the other people that they, they interviewed was that since they, they, some people ran into the bush, some people ran away and they started coming back and trickling in. As at 2 p.m. yesterday, I called them and they got back to me at about 7 p.m. Probably we may count up to the figure he gave in the future. What we have counted with the locals here is still 43. And we are hoping that we don't get beyond that. And then even if there are people that run into the bush like missing in action, they should come back alive. The killings have increased calls for the sack of the country's service chiefs and an overhaul of the security system. Well, joining us now for more on this is Lanry Suraj, an African affairs analyst. It's good to have you join us, Mr. Suraj. Yes, good afternoon. How are you? Thank you for having me. I'm fine, thank you. Uh, the Nigerian Army has reported victory over and uh, you know over insurgency too many times, and yet these attacks are becoming fiercer by the day. At the time of the NSAS protest, when it was gaining momentum here uh, down south, the North was also campaigning with the hashtag Secure the North. Um, and that was followed by reports of suspected militants asking farmers to pay hefty amounts of money so that they could harvest their crops. Uh, and shouldn't this have been a red flag when it started mm -hmm. up until the time that, you know, people started protesting and, you know, running that hashtag? Shouldn't that have been a red flag for the government and, of course, security operatives? Oh, unfortunately, and I think this has been said several times, that our military and also security apparatus here in the country, especially operating under this uh, uh, very rare and um, serious circumstances, have failed to leverage on intelligence. Uh, for the militant to have even come up with such a brazen um, audacity to ask for security money, um, in a sovereign country and so-called um, secured country should have provided an opportunity for the government to have even baited the militants and rounded and arrested and dealt with them. Uh, but this is where I, I, I think it is the major challenge that we need to contend with. Uh, and uh, this is where it would also be important to start holding the president responsible for some of these you know, atrocious act against the citizens. Okay. Uh, so where you don't have people who would pay the price uh, for this kind of casualty uh, among the public office order, uh, it is a continuation and endorsement of the killing of innocent Nigerians. L let me just quickly ask my last question so I can let you go. The military reports uh, uh, that every now and again, the purchase of, you know, advanced technology and arms, but we don't know how well they utilize it. So the question is, has it been utilized well enough? Because we see videos of, you know, um, attacks from the sky, but we really don't know how well that works in terms of, you know, reducing the insurgency in those areas. Yeah, I, I think we've seen uh, the liberation of local governments from the control of um, the Boko Haram terrorists. Uh, we've seen the containment of some of the activities of the Boko Haram terrorists. Uh, we're expecting improvement on those achievements uh, that dated back to 2016, 2017, 
But rather, I, and I tend to suspect that, you know, um, the military chiefs uh, almost um, allowing some of these insecurities to um, make excuses for increased and improved budgetary provision and allocation uh, rather than protecting the citizens. Okay. Well, Mr. Suraj, thank you very much for speaking with us. We appreciate it.